something that was different than him than probably any other kid. He wanted to wrestle the tough matches. He wanted to wrestle the top guys. He wanted to put himself in that situation. That burning desire to just lay it all on the line. He was probably the most competitive athlete I've ever been around. I asked Justin, how can you be such a kind-hearted person and get in the ring and become the person that you are? And he says, Mom, it's my high. We were trying for a couple years before we actually found out she was pregnant. I went to the doctor and he told me that he thought he heard two heartbeats and I'm like, oh please no. What am I gonna do with two babies? I don't even know if I can take care of one. But then I got used to the idea and it was, it was pretty exciting. Very wild, rowdy, loud children, including their father. So there was three of them that I had to deal with. We definitely fought a lot. I know we gave my parents a lot of headaches. We've had couches broken, beds broken. I can't tell you how many things were broken in our house. <laughs> we played football in the house, you know, we would just, you know, just tear that house apart. We'd move the furniture around and my dad, he would just sit back and watch us duke it out <laughs> in front of him. And I was down on the floor, of course, playing football with Marcus and Justin. One of them was going for the pass and I threw him the ball and caught it. The other tackled one right into the pot and just dropped and shattered. And, about then the babysitter walked in, I was like, sorry, but I gotta go to work. Safford, it's, it's a unique place. It's, it's so secluded from, from a major city. We're just, you know, small town, you know, rural Arizona. A lot of kids never get an opportunity to get out of this town. You are a rancher or you work for the federal prison or the state prison system, become a teacher, or you go to work for the mine. Most of the people are tied to the copper mine in one way or another. My dad's been working there 30 years. Both of my grandpas, they retired from there. My brother works there, all my uncles, my cousins. It's the biggest open pit copper mine in the United States. The mine is everything for us. If that mine were to somehow really tank, it would impact everything from this school to our supermarkets to you know, our, our, our tire shops. I mean, we're all you know, reliant on, on the mine for our economy. It, it's very difficult, strenuous work, it's shift work. Justin worked there in the summer. It was hard work. Uh, I worked every day, 12 hours a day, hours riding back and forth. He'd come home black with grease. And the reason I liked it is because I wanted him to go to school. So it was like, okay, if you don't go to school, this is what you're gonna be doing. He worked for a full summer, made some good money, and, and realized that he never wanted to do it again, I believe. <laughs> I'd heard things about the Gaethje boys, because it was always the Gaethje boys back then. You're gonna love them, coach. You're gonna love these guys. That, they work super hard, they do whatever you want. We fed off each other through sports and stuff, you know. We always pushed each other. I mean, any sport we played, we were always on a team together. In a small town like this, we only have so many kids that come out for our sports, and we have to share athletes. We don't see a lot of that individualized, I'm just gonna do this one sport and go with it. He's always a wrestler. He was a football player too, you know, and he did baseball. They were doing headlocks to each other before they could even walk. I think it was just evident that wrestling was gonna be the sport that they got into. I've done it since I was four, and I've done it every year since I was four. And I always had a partner, my brother, so it was perfect. I mean, there's nothing better than a twin that, you know, you can be competitive with, grow off of, and push each other, and that's, that's why he's successful now. Because <laughs> I, I pushed him. <laughs> when he came in as a freshman, we were showing throws or lateral drops and he was already hitting them so I pulled him up and started talking about it and everybody's right there watching. Next thing I know, up my feet are up in there. He freaking threw me in front of everybody. And he still won't let me live that down. I don't care if you're playing marbles, he's gonna do what he has to do to win because he didn't like to lose. That's one thing he didn't want, he, he didn't want to lose, you know. It wasn't a bad sport if he did lose, but he hated losing, he wanted to win. I can't remember what his record was, like 190 and seven or something like that. And most of those losses were like his freshman to sophomore year. Yeah, sophomore year in state, it was a state championship match. They ended up moving weight classes around to help us win a, a state championship, our first one. So that puts him up against. The senior Aaron Hancock, he was like just Jack Diesel and he was a scary dude and um, we were both undefeated. 
Hancock is a senior, and Gacy is a sophomore. And he kicked my butt. He's overwhelmed. But he's going to learn a valuable lesson. He's, he's learning a lot. Justin was kind of the kid that would go, and he would deal with it and process it on his own. And then when he'd come out to us, he was done. You know, he was done with it. You could see the turnaround from there is where he started to change because the next two years he won a state title, two state titles. His junior year, he was voted the most outstanding wrestler at the state tournament. And his senior year, he just he dominated completely, not even a close match. Justin always wanted to wrestle Division I. I mean, that was his life dream. We got a call from a coach up in Northern Colorado University interested in, in uh, Justin coming up for a visit. You know, I think once he found out that he can wrestle Division I, I think that made up his mind right then and there. They were big fish in, in the pond here in Stafford. You know, and you go off and nobody cares who Justin Gaethje was, you know, when he got to school. Oh, man, it was really eye-opening because Division I is a different story, so. You know, he was, he was a raw talent, um, but he had the explosiveness, had the talent, he just needed somebody to, to kind of mold him. He just, he beat me up. Um, he would, I would be crawling off the mat, he'd be dragging me back by, by my feet. I broke my body, you break your body, you break yourself over and over, and unfortunately it's good for you. He improved, which is what you want to see, and then went on to the national tournament that year, and to this day, UNC's uh, first and only All-American since the move up to Division One. My parents, I don't know where they got it from, but back in the day, you know, they had the, the box and you could get pay-per-view for free all the time. I don't know if the box was legal. Was it legal? <laughs> we started watching the UFC back when they were doing it with bare knuckle, you know? From then on, I was like, oh shit. One day, I'm gonna try that. So we, at the time, we had a big heavyweight who didn't really have a practice partner in the room. We were just looking for anybody in the area that would uh, come in and you know, give him a body to move around. And uh, Shane Carwin lives in Greeley. Shane came in, St. Pierre, and Rashad Evans, and, and some of those other guys. When they came in, I was like, man, these guys are normal people. I'm no different than them. You know, I think that's where Gaethje really saw the, saw where he could take his wrestling and saw a future in the sport of MMA. He was struggling in, in school a little bit, so he needed to get his grades up. And his wrestling coach told him, if you get your grades up, I'll, I'll get you a fight. You know, we said, if you stay eligible through the season, we'll, we'll let you fight in an amateur fight after the, after the season's done. And he did it. He stuck to his words, so set him up with a fight. Man, we went up there, and it was in a park, in a boxing ring. And I'd never been in a fight, never trained, never sparred, never hit a pad. Mentally, I was ready. Physically, you know, and technique, technically wise, I wasn't ready, but I was like, I'm not going to box. Like, I've never boxed. That would be stupid for me to go out there and try to box this guy. So I just double-legged him right away, and then... I came up with two brutal, brutal slams. Right away I was like, oh my god, he's dead. He, it was bad. It was one of the most brutal knockouts I've ever seen. We're sitting there with our mouths open like, oh my god, this is what we're going to be watching from now on? You know, he started in the summertime trying to uh, jump into some of the other disciplines, the boxing, the jiu-jitsu. And I was like, I need to find a coach. So I stumbled into the Grudge Training Center and met Trevor Whitman and that, that was, that was a godsend right there. Wrestling got him to that point, but now he's so multidimensional that he don't have to just rely on wrestling. He's got, he's got kicks, he's got punches. I mean, he's, he's well-rounded now. I think to jump into the cage and, and to get punched in the face, you have to be fearless. He says, I get a high out of the lights, the crowd, the cheers, the noise. Fighting style, he's just a maniac. He's one of the most aggressive fighters I've ever seen. You better put him down. Otherwise, he's going to keep on coming. 